Hello everyone, I'm Jeff Perlman, founder and CEO of Zojo, and I'm here today to talk about API 2.0. So what is API 2.0? Well, before we get to that, some of you have probably heard the term API and weren't exactly sure what it was. Basically, it means Application Programming Interface. It's short for that. And what that is is all of the classes, uh, events, properties, uh, methods, etc., that you use in the Zojo framework when you write your apps in Zojo. So in that case, what is API 2.0? Well, it's our effort to improve the API in the Zojo framework. We first shipped Zojo in 1998. We've added a lot of functionality since then. And unfortunately, some inconsistency has sort of crept in over the years in terms of the names of things. Now that makes Zojo harder to use because when you learn about a certain functionality in one part of the framework, and then you go looking for it, say, in another, and things aren't named the same, it's harder to find those things, harder to learn them and use them. Consistency solves that problem because if you learn how to use something in one area of the framework and there's similar functionality in another, you go there to find that it's named the same. And this is true across different project types as well, from desktop to mobile to web. Now, just a few examples of things where we weren't consistent. In some places we use the word remove, other places we use the word delete. A big one is with indexes. Um, most of the things in Zojo start at zero, but in some places they start at one. So one of the things we've done is gone through all of the APIs and made them all zero based where they could be. Now there are a tiny number of them where the index comes from something outside of Zojo and we can't control that. But the overwhelming majority of indexes are now zero based. In fact, you'll notice in the documentation that we no longer call this out. You can assume that something is now zero based unless it specifies otherwise. Another example is events. Uh, event names weren't always clear about when the event was actually happening. For example, uh, in a mobile screen, it has a closing event. That indicates that the, when the event fires, the screen is in the process of closing, but it still exists. Uh, in the case of, say, a web page, uh, it has a closed event because by the time that event fires, the, the page is already closed. These are important distinctions. that Most of the time they don't matter, but when they do, it's very important. Now, if you've been using Zojo for a while, you've gotten used to these inconsistencies. You've learned them, and that's, that's great. But I think you're gonna find that once you start using the API, uh, API 2, and see how consistent it is, you're gonna really appreciate it. And it may take a little getting used to because you're gonna be looking up some new things, but the consistency really makes it much easier to use. It's also easier for new users that are learning Zojo for the first time. And that means more people will join the Zojo community and that's great for everybody. Now, in most cases, this simply means we're renaming things. And we've been around for over 20 years. So we don't make changes like this very often and I don't expect we're gonna make a change like this ever again. Now I wanna emphasize that we only changed what needed to be changed. Most of the APIs that you're used to using are still there, you can still use them. We've only changed things that were inconsistent. Yes, they will. You shouldn't have to change anything if you don't want to. The only exception are web projects that were created prior to Zojo 2020 R1. That's when we introduced the new web framework, which is compatible with API 2. At, with the web framework, it just wasn't practical for us to support the old API and the new one. No, if it's a small project and you really feel compelled, you can go ahead and upgrade it to the new API. Uh, however, with larger projects, we recommend that you only upgrade when you need to. In other words, if there's some API that's adding some new functionality, you can upgrade just that portion of it. There's no need to upgrade the entire project. In 2021 R3, we added a new set of desktop controls that replaced the old ones. Any projects you created 
prior to 2021 R3 will continue to use the controls you were using before. New projects will use the new controls. Having said that, you can mix and match the new and old controls, both in old projects and in new ones. Now the reason for these new controls was so that we could make the event names consistent. And we also took the opportunity to make a few other minor API changes as well, again, for consistency. 2021 R3 also added the ability to convert uh, an entire window or just a control to the new desktop controls. So you don't have to do it manually. Well, as I mentioned earlier, we created the new desktop controls so that we could create more consistency with event names, not just between controls, but also across project types, mobile and web. Additionally, since all web controls are prefixed with web and all mobile controls are prefixed with mobile, someone coming to Zojo to build a mobile or web app who then decides they need to make a desktop app is gonna to expect to find controls that are prefixed with desktop. So finding those, it's going to make sense to them. And the same will be true of someone learning Zojo for the first time to build desktop. They'll, when they go to build a web app or mobile app, they'll expect to find controls that are prefixed with those prefixes. 2021 R3 is our last release in our transition to API 2.0. So don't expect to see any other big sweeping API changes in releases to come in the future. Well, I hope I've answered your questions. If you have more, please feel free to contact us. And thank you again for watching and for using Zojo.